Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number four, and I'm going to discuss the law of cosines. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So the law of cosines, to prove it, is very straightforward, but the beauty of it, or its application, or its use, probably isn't, you know, readily, uh, uh, you know, obvious. It definitely wasn't readily obvious to me the first time I saw it. I just saw it as a proof and went, eh, fair enough. Um, but it's only when you actually look, at, you kind of see an example that you see its power. So, the law of cosines is very useful in solving or calculating electric fields, electric potentials, that sort of thing. And, of course, magnetic fields and magnetic potentials. So, the law of cosines. Let's define the vector C as the difference of two vectors A and B. All right? If I want to take the dot product of C with C, or what I'm going to get is the dot product of A minus B with, of course, A minus B. Now, by definition, the dot product of A and B in this case is the magnitude of the vector A multiplied by the magnitude of the vector B multiplied by the cosine of the angle in between. And, of course, you can look up my video on the dot product if you're not sure of that. That's video number two. So if we do that then, so we have the same thing here, we have c dot c. So applying that particular uh, dot product, we have the magnitude of c multiplied by the magnitude of c multiplied by the cosine of zero, because of course they're the same vector, so there's no angle between them. Similarly, this time we're going to get a dot a. I will say if I do it with my pen instead, we're going to get a dot a. We're going to get minus a dot b. We're going to get, we'll say that's here. There's a dot a, there's minus a dot b. You're going to get minus b dot a, which is here. And you're going to get plus b dot b, which is here. So once again, c dot c, c dot c just turns out to be c squared, or the magnitude of c to be squared. Similarly, a dot a is going to be magnitude of a multiplied by the magnitude of a times cos zero. Similarly with b. And we're going to get this minus 2a dot b. That's because a dot b is equal to b dot a. Okay, it is commutative in that respect. So a dot b is equal to b dot a. So for that reason, we can rewrite that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus twice the magnitude of a multiplied by the magnitude of b times the cos of the angle in between. And that is the law of cosines. Great stuff. So you might say, who cares? And exactly, that's exactly what I said to myself the first time I saw it. I said, sound, who cares? But let's look at something which you haven't seen yet, hopefully, in your study of electromagnetism, uh, you will see something that looks like like this. We'll say. So, why would you have something like this? Well, let's say these are these are all vectors. Let's say, for argument's sake, you have charges. You might have a charge here and a charge here, and you're looking to evaluate the the electric field or the potential at different distances from it. So, I'm just going to take that for the moment. Let's say we have this this particular construction of vectors. So, this as you will see in another video, is called the separation vector. And to be honest, like, that's, I don't know what you call that. I don't want to say it's R. I don't want to say it's R prime, because they are, they are separate. So I'm, in all my tutorials, I'm just going to call that squiggle. Or the <laughs> squiggle, yeah, exactly, the separation vector. So let's say we have this, the squiggle vector is from here to here. Capital R vector is from here to here. Uh, the small b vector is from here to here. And the small a vector is from here to here. The squiggle prime vector is from here to here. Notice the directions, it's very important. So, if we're trying to calculate the, uh, the, we'll say, the vector form of either, in this case, the separation vector or the separation vector prime, squiggle or squiggle prime, okay, if you want to accept my uh, terminology, well, then you could go about using the Pythagorean theorem or whatever else, okay? But, the whole thing about the law of cosines is you need to get up. We need we need to, of course, define we'll say a vector c, which is the sep, which is the difference between two other vectors a and b. Now, if you look carefully, you'll see that squiggle, this vector is actually a minus r, and it mightn't be immediately obvious why that is. So, a minus r. So remember, of course, a vector, if I can, I can pick up r and put it anywhere I like, provided I give it the same magnitude and direction. So I'm going to draw a. There's a. Okay, there's plus a. And minus r is going to look something like this. Uh, plus, 
it's going to look something like that. Okay, so if you put the, the resultant vector then is going to do this, which is exactly what our squiggle vector here is doing. So this is going to be squiggle, this is uh, minus r, and this is a. Okay, so we're able to write the squiggle vector or the separation vector in terms of a minus r, just like I've written here. And what if we look at this squig squiggle prime, this, this guy inside here? Similarly, if we look, if we draw r, there's r, the r vector. If we add to that minus b, we're going to do this. It's going to do something like, it's going to do something like this. There's minus b. There's a, um, there's plus r, and of course the resultant vector squiggle prime is there, which is, exa is is exactly what we have here. So I'm able to write squiggle prime as r minus b. So applying the law of cosines, we get the following two formulae. Okay, so straight away, if you ever have a situation where you can you can kind of manipulate the vectors such that you get an a minus b, or in this case an a minus r and an r minus b, you can immediately write down the uh, the resultant square and using the law of cosines, and I'm, you can take it from me that this would and even this you will absolutely see this diagram in the coming videos when I talk about calculating electric fields because this diagram is used very regularly for lots of reasons. So, love cosines, we use it regularly. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also visit universityphysicstorials.com.